of the knee-jerk Pangea theory exists. The Pacific spread is too difficult to visualize because it's so big. The Atlantic spread is so obvious that a child can recognize it, but they are the same. On this small planet were the shallow seas that covered two-thirds of the continental plates and have since completely drained off into the newly rifted open deep oceans. These shallow seas on the continental plates hold every scrap of evidence ever discovered of ancient sea life of the Earth. Those shallow seas are completely gone now, completely drained off into the new rifted open deep oceans lowering the actual sea level by half a mile. Is this possible? The oceans have absolutely nothing to do with tectonic spreading, except that they cool the thickening mantle. Tectonic spreading, even according to the most conservative scientists, has created two-thirds of the Earth's surface in the last 200 million years, and therefore the same the same must be true on all planets. Now I'm going to run the Atlantic and Pacific without rotating the planet, honestly. There's no truth here. I did nothing while the other side was turned away. Please examine this carefully. The outer, upper tectonic plates, the land fits together like a pulled apart puzzle. No exceptions. There is simply no doubt of any sort, that these land masses fit perfectly on a smaller planet. All our natural history tells us this. No ancient oceans existed. Now drained shallow seas hold the only undersea history that exists on Earth. Antarctica was subtropical. There were no frozen poles before 60 million years ago. If Earth was always the size it is today, we've got a problem because two-thirds of the upper tectonic plate is missing. If subduction existed, it simply cannot and does not explain anything at all. The evidence is overwhelming. It simply needed collecting and demonstrating. The Earth grew. No Pangea, no Godswana, Laurasia, or Tethys Sea. No meteorite knocked off the dinosaurs, no vacuum in space, no Big Bang. If what you see before your eyes, right here, is true, the Emperor has no clothes and everything, everything in science, must change. Since no physicist in his right mind had any intention to wreck his career betting on a failed theory, someone had to do it. It needed to be a, it needed to be a total nutcase. So <laughs> I figured I figured three years tops. It took me thirty years, and it scared the hell out of me. The growing Earth, no, the implications as I got deeper into it, were staggering. I had really had no idea. A growing Earth was the smallest tip of the iceberg. All of science would have to change. I know it sounds weird. Just pretend I'm telling you a story, because it gets too difficult now. If the Earth grew, all planets grow. 
all larger moons grow. Meteorites accrete, but they don't grow yet because they don't have any energy or magnetic field. All suns, solar systems, galaxies, and the universe grows. So, no Big Bang. That's only number two on my list. <laughs> New matter is made at the cores of these bodies. In fact, this is the only function that these bodies have, to make new matter and to grow, not to support us walking around like bacteria on the dead, cold crust <clears throat> of the Earth. That's not the Earth's function. The Earth's function, like all bodies in space, growing outward is to provide new matter so it can grow outward some more. Doesn't that seem obvious? Big bang. There must be a pre-matter. That matter is made of, excuse me, there must be a pre-matter that matter is made of. And it must be everywhere. Everywhere. How do we know this? Well, pair production happens everywhere. Air production is matter creation. So this pre-matter must be everywhere. Isn't that what Sherlock Holmes would say? I think that Sherlock would say that. He would say, well, if it happens everywhere, uh, guess what? That pre-matter must be everywhere. You mean the universe is made out of this stuff? If I were a fish in the ocean, I would know Joe and Octi, and I would know the ground, but I wouldn't know what this stuff is that I'm floating around in. Because to me, a fish, the ocean is nothing. I just happen to move in it. To us, the universe is the ocean. And logically, that ocean, I mean, think about this for a minute. I know it's, I understand it's hard, this is hard, hard part. If the universe began with nothing in it and started to convert something into matter, the only thing to convert the matter from is the universe. Nothing. So the universe must be made of something that you can convert into matter. What is matter? Matter is stuff. No, it's not. Is matter stuff? Not. When I go like that, the molecules and atoms in my hand do not hit this. The electromagnetic fields of, my, of the molecules and atoms of my hand interact with these. The, the atoms, the particles, never touch. Any particle, any electron, positron, is a particle at the center of an electromagnetic field. The field is the size of a baseball stadium. The particle at the, at the center is a flea. Baseball stadium, flea. Never touch. Baseball stadium crash, no flea touches. Get it? Okay. There's no... <laughs> now, we don't know what that flea is made out of, but it's not made out of stuff. Because in pair production, when energy seems to strike something, there's nothing there to strike. So it has to be something that's invisible. We can't see it. Because out of it, it makes electrons and positrons, which are matter, which have gravity and substance, and they are exactly what our matter is. I'm meandering a little bit here, I'm sorry. There must be a pre-matter. That matter, that matter is made of, and it must be everywhere. Why? Because pair production happens everywhere. Everywhere. There is no place that pair production doesn't happen. Therefore, matter is not made of anything. That is, matter is not stuff. Stuff. Or stuffing. <laughs> matter is energy and electromagnetic fields. Why? Why do we know this? Well, if two pairs collide and seem to, quote, annihilate, which of course they can't annihilate, nothing annihilates, nothing can be destroyed. If they annihilate, what happens is the energy flies off and they disappear into the universe again. So what were they to begin with? Well, before they annihilated each other, each of them had a half of an electromagnetic field or half a charge. So that thing that the high energy particle hit was a full charge or a full field. Isn't that the way math works? Full field, negative.